Hello and welcome to the session. In this video, let's design a learning system in machine learning. See, according to the definition by Arthur Samuel, machine learning enables a machine to automatically learn from the data, improve the performance from experience, and predict things without being explicitly programmed. These are the steps of a designing of a learning system. So learning system is built around the learning algorithm. The steps involved are you have to first choose the training experience, then choose the target function, choose the representation of a target function, choose the function approximation and final design. So let's see the step one that is the training experience. See the first first and foremost important task in machine learning is to choose the training data or training experience which will be fed to the machine learning algorithm. Let's consider a case study. Let's say we are designing a game of chess. So if it is a direct experience in a chess game, the individual board states and the moves of the chess games are given directly. But if it is an indirect experience, the move sequences and the results are only given. So training experience here depends upon the presence of a supervisor who can label all the valid moves from for a board state. So in the sense you create, you have to first choose the training data or training experience where you give labeling for all the valid moves. You say these are the valid moves and label them. So that is the first step that is choosing the training experience. Suppose you don't have a supervisor, then the game agent will play against itself and learn the good moves. So basically that would be like an example of a reinforcement learning. So no matter what, whether you have a supervised learning or you have a reinforcement learning, that training experience or how you choose your training data becomes very important. The step two is you have to determine the target function. So it means, target function means you specify right, the knowledge or you give the knowledge to the algorithm which will describe what are the, for example, in this case of game of chess, you give knowledge to the algorithm describing what are the legal moves. So let's say we write a function called as a next move function. So the next move function will describe what are the legal moves that can be taken for the game of chess. So in the game of chess, you decide these are the number of possible legal moves that can be taken in order to get success. So that would be the target function. So you write a function here that will describe all the possible legal moves to be taken in order to get success. So let's say since this is about uh, function right you are deciding what is the target function so it can be in the form of a graphical representation it can be in the form of tabular form or linear equations so you choose the optimized move using any of these representations so the next move function will move the targets like out of these moves and it will tell what are the success rates so let's say in the game of chess I have four possible moves right so the machine will choose the optimized move which will provide success to it so four options are given these are the four possible moves you can take but this target function will choose the most optimized one in order to have the success so that's the goal of target function you choose the most optimized move which will give you success so now that choosing of optimized move can be done in many ways as I said it can be done in a form of a table you give some rules you write a function you write or give it in the form of a tabular form or also maybe using linear equations as shown here so this is a linear equation which is shown here right where x1 x2 x3 these are the different board features and w0 w1 w2 w3 these are the weights so what we can do is we write a function here we write a target function in the step 3 which will choose the optimized move for the game of chess in the step 4 we choose an approximation algorithm for the target function so basically an optimized move cannot be you cannot uh, choose an optimized move just by using the training data 
right the training data has to go with a set of examples and through these examples the training data will approximate which steps are chosen and after that the machine will provide feedback okay so choosing an optimized move it's just not possible with training data right you have to feed the training data to the algorithm right and uh, let the algorithm should experience that okay these kinds of moves will result in failure these kinds of moves will result in success so the algorithm has to experience like the these kind the moves which moves will give failures which kind of moves will give fail uh, success right so based upon the experience next the algorithm will approximate right which step should be taken next to get the success so that is the step 4 where you choose an approximation algorithm for the target function so the focus here is to choose the weights and fit for the given training samples effectively so you have to cho choose the weights you have the training samples but which weights which fitting would be good to have the best move so and the goal is what is best move so that the error is reduced so how do you measure the error here you have the training minus a v train of b minus v cap of b so let's say b is a sample right and let's say v cap of b is a predicted hypothesis so the difference between the training hypothesis and the difference and the predicted hypothesis should be as less as possible okay so the difference between the training hypothesis and the predicted hypothesis should be as less as possible so the goal is to reduce this error so approximation let's say how it is carried out so let's say you what we do is we compute the error between the trained hypothesis and the expected hypothesis as shown in this equation right compute the error right between the trained hypothesis and the expected hypothesis let's say the error is error of b then for every bold feature let's say xi are the features of the board and weights are w so you calculate the wi you calculate the weights which are the best weights so how do you calculate the weights wi plus mu into error of b into xi so this will give you the weights so the and mu is actually the constant that moderates the size of the weight update so basically you can get the best move by approximation approximating your function you can get the best move by reducing uh, the errors so how do you reduce the errors is by proper calculation of weights and reduction of errors so you can calculate the weights through this equation so basically step 4 is all about choosing the approximation algorithm to get the best move which results in much reduced errors to get the reduced errors you choose the best value of mu and the best value of weights now coming to the last step the step last step is final design so you get your final design where the system will go through a number of examples so once your design is ready you put your system to a number of examples you try to see how many failures are achieving how many success moves you are achieving how many correct decisions have been taken how many incorrect decisions have been taken and based up the upon that you correct your algorithm right you calculate your next step so one good example is deep blue this was a this is an intelligent computer which is ml based and it won the chess game against the chess expert gary kasparov and it became the first computer which had beaten a human chess expert so deep blue is an intelligent computer which is based upon which is based on ml so to summarize a learning system should have the following components performance system which will allow the game to play against itself it should have a critic system which would generate the samples it should have a generalization system to generate the hypothesis based on samples it should have a experimental system to generate a new system based in currently learned function so this is sent as input to the performance system so these are the basic components of a learning system so thank you so much any doubts please write to me in the comment box thank you